All right. Uh, everyone always asks me, when is the best time to prune for, to prevent oak wilt? And I always say, August is a wonderful time. Very hot, very wonderful. Uh, and there's a reason why it's hot, uh, because the fungus that actually transmits the disease and the insect that actually transmits those spores of that particular fungus are almost non-existent in August. So it's a wonderful time of the, of the year to, to paint, I mean to prune. And then we also use paint, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But first of all, we have our choices of pruning. So normally we have loppers or pruners like this, or we have a pruning saw. This is the recommended type of saw that you want. Some people use a bow saw, but this is actually a saw specially made for pruning, and there's a reason for that. Okay, get on the contrast on that. Old-fashioned saws have what's called a set. They actually take the teeth and move them back and forth. This one doesn't. It has a specially designed tooth. And again, this is the time of year we want to do it, August. And we're going to take off a branch. And I'm going to show you step by step how to do a large branch or a very long branch to minimize any kind of damage to the tree. So we got those two things going. One, preventing oak wilt. And two, how to, do, how to prune these large branches correctly so as not to prevent, produce any uh, disadvantage on the tree. Or what are some of your other tools so, that people need so, always wear protective eyewear as well as uh, gloves when you're pruning or doing any kind of gardening week but gardening work but particularly during pruning this over here as I mentioned earlier we want to paint the wounds even though this is the best time of the year to, to prune so as to prevent oak wilt we apply a paint which is 100% uh, one percent uh, uh, can uh, prune all, or to protect all the wounds. I'm, I'm losing my voice here, but so we have two different ones. Normally, we just have a dark color. A lot of people like gray or black. I like purple. You don't have to have gray or black. Or if you want to be more natural, I picked this up last night and it's clear. So you're just applying a paint that's going to be clear, and so you look natural at the trees and everything. Finally, what we do is we disinfect the tools. And so I always recommend a Lysol product because it has mostly alcohol in it. And that's ac excellent for sterilizing the tools. You can use any kind you want. I, you know, I just picked this up last night. This is the nice pink one. There's a blue one. I use the original yellow one. Doesn't matter, people. Just use a Lysol product or use something your own that has chlorine or a combination of chlorine and alcohol. The problem with chlorine bleach, it's really good, but it really damages the tools and your clothes. So you have nice, beautiful stains all over you. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we have our eyewear, we have our gloves, we're gonna get our, our saw right here, and I'm gonna show you the proper way to prune a long branch so as to, one, the, the wound is not going to be oak wilt susceptible. And then also, it's not going to damage any trees. So let's get to it right now. We have our saw, we have our gloves, we have our eyewear. And I am going to stand on my little stool here. Now, if you don't know when to use a stool or get a professional, there is a wonderful video on what? GardenStyleSA.com where you can see me and at that point in time where you can understand on when to get a professional, a certified arborist, or you can do it yourself at home. Mark, what kind of tree are we uh, th That's an excellent question. This is a chinkapin oak. And behind this, I'm going to lead you finally for the, the other recommended tree. We recommend three oaks in San Antonio because they are resistant to the disease. All oaks get the disease. Some are more resistant than others. Chinkapin oak is one. Burr oak is another. And Monterey oak is the third one. All right, so I see you've got markings on your tree here. All right, I got orange markings because, hey, I want to make everybody understand exactly what 
I am going to do and where to make the cuts. A lot of times uh, we quickly do it and people always ask, no, 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 go back, go back and do that again. So I have marked down the tree. All right, here's what it is. You have a very long branch. You want to do what's called the three-step method. And that is also described on our website, uh, gardenstylesa.com. And it's going to be coming out in articles uh, later on this week and next week. So make sure you find all those articles coming out. All right, we have a long branch. And yes, I did this like a cooking show. I did some of this before we, we came on the air. So normally we cut just a, 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 an undercut about six to eight inches out. This is about six inches out here. So I have to lift this up just a little bit so I can make the cut. So you make underneath about a third of the way through. I meant it to do this with two hands. And I'm left-handed, sorry folks. So you make a cup, you go about a third of the way through. Can we get all that on TV? A TV, on the, on the projector. So about a third of the way through, right? And so then that's the undercut, first cut. Then we go ahead and about an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch ahead of that cut on top we finish it all off. Now I can, I can cut through here just a little bit. So I'm holding on just uh, for dear life because it may fall on top of the uh, photographer here. <laughs> so we don't want that to happen. So you cut all the way through. And then you have a cut. So if it would just fall off naturally, other than helping the helper in the background, we would have a nice clean cut. What we're worried about is if you just go ahead and make the cut on top, it would strip all the bark all the way down. And we don't want that to happen. We'd want a nice clean cut. Now it's called the third cut. So we had one, two, and this is going to be the third cut. We cut just outside the branch collar. And the branch collar is on every tree. And you can see it, some trees more than others but we have a little swelling right here. It's like a little donut, or if you're from the Northeast, bagel here. Uh, so it's a little swelling right, right about like that, or you can see it on this side, about where my, where my finger is. And so we make the last cut, the third and final cut, through there. Again, just like a cooking show, we do this beforehand. And so you see, we have a nice clean cut. And so we didn't strip anything down and it is outside the branch collar. Now some experts argue that's all you need to do is just make the cut outside the branch collar. What we have found uh, is that, you no, know, you want to go ahead and apply a paint to prevent this. What we found, the science has found that it is Painting is 100% successful in preventing the disease, and this is a fresh wound, particularly on fresh wound. There's some debate whether dead branches are susceptible. I would say yes. Yeah. Some people say no. If you're really, really, really worried about it, just go ahead and paint. Now, my assistant here has uh, provided me with the two, two paints. Which one? Or both? I am going to use the black one because it's better on film. Now everybody be careful. Uh, you might want to just, just come away. I don't need a whole lot. I just make need to get on the outside. All right, there we go, we're done. Two or three squirts, and that's all I need. So it doesn't need to, because obviously you didn't cover all the way around. I didn't cover, I could just, now I did. Now it's covered. I just used my finger on that one. Okay. That was right. Thank you so much. So again, I just went to the store last night, and I got uh, some paint, uh, uh, some spray paint, and it doesn't really matter. You can. I like Krylon latex, but I couldn't find any last night. So I just got some quick covering right here. Doesn't need to be a whole lot. It just has to be on the tree for four to seven days. So you could actually use Elmer's glue if you wanted to. Uh, but uh, uh, that's all it has to be on there. So that's what we want to do. That's really, it's really simple. If you have 
a oak tree and you need to prune or you think the tree needs to prune, then go ahead, use that three-step method on the tree, then paint, and that way you can be assured of having good tree health and prevent oak wilt. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we have those questions all the time is when do we prune? Because people are rightly concerned about oak wilt. The two best times to prune for oak wilt are the winter and in San Antonio it's January, uh, December and January and June, July, August, September. So the coldest and the hottest times of the year. Now, if you want to ask me the question, what is the best time to prune, it's going to be in the wintertime. You know, regardless, it's into the wintertime on that. Now, the only exception, and I can see people going, but, 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 Mark. The only exception is for those trees that bloom in the spring. You want to wait till after the broom, bloom, or as I say, prune after the bloom. And you do that in May. Camera, so okay, well, let's go over here. It, it's the very stylistic safety glasses as well. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, as a, we need to get you out of the tree shade. All right, so, so now go. as the uh, sun goes away. So, yeah, is there any other questions out there? Um, you know, we, maybe after 30 years, I've gotten the information out to the public. I think just one of the only other things that we would most people may not know or may be concerned about mm. is yes pruning for the health making yeah. sure your tree doesn't get sick but you know do can i prune for the way my tree looks you oh know, yeah maybe okay do i prune the branches that are outside or inside what, what is it for shape and health so, of my tree so the, oh see there you go uh -huh. there's three reasons to prune one safety safety from the tree for us yeah. so the, next, the, 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 the next one is health okay. health of the tree and for us, seed number one. And then third and finally, aesthetics. Yes. Because some people have a different view of aesthetics than others. So you kind of, that's the last one. Mm -hmm. So uh, what you want to be able to do and prune your trees is never take out more than 25% of the canopy. Okay. Do not strip out everything where you take out everything and just have little poodle tails on the end. Yeah. So you want to make sure on that one. So. Uh, what that does is actually hinders the tree and its, and its growth and health. So you're, a little bit goes a long way on the tree. Uh, the third thing is more, it's more aesthetics or a little bit structural. You look at the tree and you think ladders okay. or the spiral case in a, in, in a uh, uh, what do we call that on the coast? A big lamp or a big, a big. Yeah, yeah. So, do we have some of that information on garden stylists? Absolutely. Okay. So, you want to look at several articles that I've written or David Abrego have written about trees and how to prune, how to plant, how to take care of it. Perfect. That's very important. Perfect. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for joining us. We hope that this has been informative. Um, please share the information and remember to join us. Subscribe to our Facebook Live channel. Remember to join us every Thursday at 10.30. Bye-bye.